Hi, and welcome to Snake Therapy. I'm Shira, and this is a whole lot of stuff. That's right, no snake in my hands today because I need both of them in order to deal with this. But it does happen to be for the snakes, so I think they'll forgive me for not getting to be in this part of the video. It was my birthday last week, and in my family, since my grandmother was from Holland, we followed the Dutch tradition of wishing everyone in the family happy birthday when it was anyone's birthday. So this year, I decided to wish my snake family happy birthday by buying them some birthday presents. Want to find out what's in here and why I felt it deserved an episode? Let's slither on into it. Some of you may have heard of the practice of free roaming pet snakes. If you haven't, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's when you allow them the freedom to roam as they please outside of their enclosures in your house. This gives them enrichment by providing the kind of exercise and cognitive stimulation that most captive snakes don't get a lot of, and it's really beneficial to their health. The thing is, to free roam your snakes, you have to be a thousand percent sure that the space you have is safe for them to do this. No escape routes like holes in the walls, gaps under doors or appliances, clutter for them to get lost in, and make sure the space is free of all dangerous items that can cause injury. Not to mention ensure that the ambient temperatures in the space are appropriate for them. Not everyone has space in their home that meets all of these criteria, which means if you do let them out, you wouldn't be able to take your eyes off of them for a moment. I've always wanted to allow my snakes this freedom, but I live in a very large 130 year old house, which is extremely old for Los Angeles, and it's simply not a safe environment for free roaming snakes. I do hope to build them their own safe playroom someday, but for the time being, I had to come up with a different solution as close to free roaming as I could. If you're in a similar situation, then this video is for you. It might give you some ideas on how you can provide some extra physical, mental, and sensory enrichment for your animals too. So let's open this stuff up and see what we've got to work with. I don't even remember all the things I bought. <laughs> oh, forgot about this one. All right, so uh, as you can see, I have a lot of stuff. I might not be able to use all of it at one time, um, but I can certainly use some of it when I am watching them outside of their enclosures and actually like hanging out with them observing them and keeping an eye on them. But the key to this project right here is this. Put this mesh top on this tent, set up the inside with all the toys and things to play on, and I can know that they will be safe in here and not escape, although I just noticed that there is a big hole here for some reason, and I'm not quite sure what that's all about, but I will definitely be blocking that. So this is the main attraction, and then we just got to set up all the things inside of it. So I'm going to use some of the new things and some things I already had. I think this is going to be really fun. It's actually a cat toy stand thing. So a lot of things that are marketed for reptiles are extra expensive and there aren't that many options for like cool enrichment items that are for reptiles. So what I did is I looked for bird perches and things like that and then um, obviously cat toys as well. And th this was really cheap. I think, I mean, I think it was under 15 bucks this one usually they're kind of expensive but i knew i couldn't get like a tall one because it wouldn't fit inside the tent so i just got a really simple one and really that's 
more than enough for them to play around, explore on, and relax on, because it's got a little hammock at the top. And it'll totally fit in there. It'll be a really nice, comfy place to hang out, I'm sure. Looks like this is easily cleanable, um, and I'll probably throw some substrate in there too so they can do some burrowing if they want to. And this will be a great point to connect things to hang. I was hoping there might be some like loops inside of here that I could hang some of these things from, but it doesn't look like that's an option. So I might also have to just cut a very small hole uh, in the tops so that I can put some kind of anchoring point. We also have nice big cork round, which I was thinking of cutting in half, put some in here and use some in another enclosure. So I'll probably do that. I have a few smaller versions of these in various enclosures and they seem to love to climb up and bask or just hang out on these type of like bird perches. Um, and these aren't very expensive at all. So I definitely highly recommend them. I do like the bamboo ones um, better than I've gotten some that they're wood with like dyed colors. And I noticed that the dye would come off if it got wet. So I wouldn't want to recommend it. Um, but this is nice, it doesn't have dye, and it also, ooh, that's cool. You can kind of shape it. So I'll have to figure out, might go really nicely in there. So there's like double level there. I got another one of the, these hanging things. Might not have space for it. This is actually possibly a great thing to put in Helios's enclosure because he has such a large enclosure and I've been thinking lately that he might need some some new stuff. He loves to hang out in his hammocks. I have hammocks between uh, the PVC perch that I built for him and he definitely spends a lot of time lounging in the hammocks. So this is probably great for him or for Anu because she needs some more things to utilize the vertical space in her enclosure. So it may not be for this, but still glad I got it. Here's another hanging thing. This is also a birdhouse. Um, it's actually soft and plush. And I got this one in particular because it has open sides on both ends and a hole here. Um, some of them have closed backs and I don't like the idea of if my snake's in there and I need to get them out, I don't like the idea of reaching my hand in when they're backed into a corner um, because that might be scary for them. So in this sense, if their face was this way, I can come in from the back and underneath their bodies or just kind of touch them a little bit to scoot them out and it won't be as scary for them if I need to get them out of it. So if you're going to buy something like this, um, I recommend personally not getting the back solid. And that would be really fun to hang. So I'm definitely got to figure out the best way to hang this so they can have their little perch in there. Well, might be able to do something in here with that. I could even just hang it vertically in the back here. And it's still something for them to kind of weave in and out of. And there's two of them, so I can use this also for when I'm doing supervised free roaming, um, which isn't really free roaming because I'm monitoring them, but um, still something fun, or I can put it in one of their enclosures. This, not sure if it's going to work out for in here, but can be fun if I tie some knots in here and do another thing in, in the enclosures or outside of the enclosures for them to climb. It'll be good exercise for them to go up the rope. Got some nice plants fake plants so they have cover even inside the covered area. I can 
put these in here. That'll be really nice. Be nice and pretty. Then I also have existing things. Uh, you might have seen these in some other videos of mine. This is literally a, a plant stand that I added dowels and, and some vines to for them to climb on. And it's stackable so I can make it taller if I want to. In this case, I don't want to. And I can put that in there or this one, which I love. And I actually take this on little zoo gigs because specifically Severus loves to hang out on this thing at gigs. He'll just chill on this thing for ages. He's going to be too big for this pretty soon. Um, but the babies will love this. So this is great. I put it on this slat piece, which actually came with the plant stand, I just screwed it to the bottom of this so it's nice and stable and it won't fall over. So this is a great thing. I can just throw right in there and be done with it. I have several extra hides that are not being used in the enclosures right now. So I'll definitely throw a couple of these in there. I have another base like this that came with that plant stand. These are actually just like coat hanger things that my husband bought and I saw them and I was like, can I steal those from you? Because they would make an awesome climbing tree if I mounted them to this base. So they're gonna have a literal playground. This is fun. So obviously this isn't a whole room to give them, but while many of my snakes are still relatively small, it will at least be a little extra space outside of what they're used to, giving them some novel stimuli to explore in their own time without me hovering over them. I can leave them in here for a few hours while I work or do other things, and they can roam and investigate things on their own. But I still will be able to keep an eye on them because I also got these little cameras, which thus far I've used in the habitats, and now I can put in here. These have live feeds that go to an app on my phone, so not only can I check on and record them at any time, I can also use this to observe who likes what toy best, which can in turn help me to improve their enclosure environments. I want to note that we keep this room in the mid to upper 70s during the daytime, which is a safe temperature for all of them, but I'm also adding a hot spot. I have a little heating pad sandwiched between two tiles, and I'm going to place that underneath the tent. The tiles will ensure that there's no risk of burning the fabric of the tent or the floor if I want to move this thing to a place with wood flooring. This gets attached to a thermostat, which I can adjust depending on which snake is in there since they have varying hotspot temperature preferences. On the inside, I'll put a hide over top of the heating element so they can curl up in there if they want to get warmer. Taping the thermostat probe to the tile but under the tent fabric will prevent them from moving the probe with their bodies from the inside. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot something really important.
So Nymeria here was the first to get to try the little playpen last night. She was already out and about and on her branches in the evening. She's nocturnal. So I thought it was the perfect opportunity and I put her in there for a couple hours. I'm still working out the kinks on those cameras, but I noticed as I checked on her that she had explored all over the place. She was all the way up at the top on top of that bird perch and seemed like she really enjoyed herself. So that's great, you did good. I'm really pleased with this thing. I mean, obviously it's not large. It's only three feet across. So for my larger snakes like Helios, it's not even an option for him. But they do make larger tents and I do intend to try to get that going at some point. So I definitely want to keep trying this kind of thing out. But for a lot of the other snakes I have, it's going to be perfect and probably for years. And the other awesome thing is I realized that I have to clean some enclosures today and it's a perfect place to put them while I clean their enclosures instead of having to put them in a tiny little bin for however long it takes me. This way they can actually have some fun while I'm cleaning out their enclosure. So that's exciting too. I'm Shira and this is Nymeria and we're so glad you joined us and we really hope you got something out of this video and that you got some ideas for your own snakes. <laughs> You're so cute. And we'll see you next time for more snake therapy. Mm -hmm.